What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. Woo! Uh, so on the last episode, we uh, we hit the track. We were at Blackhawk Farms, uh, and we had a, a couple, you know, issues or gremlins, you might say. Um, and today we are actually, I should say it, not today. I'd say today and the next few days, we will be uh, kind of taking care of some of these issues. Um, I actually did just take care of one of the issues now. Um, and uh, yeah, we have some more parts coming this week, so it's gonna be like a couple day uh, delay, but you guys won't know because, you know, the magic of video editing. <laughs> but uh, we'll get right into the video, guys, and uh, please, if you could, like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and uh, stay tuned. Woo! So we were able to tell that I had ran that. Kind of show you guys. All right, so a couple of the issues we had uh, at the track, one of them was. Uh, we had oil all over the place in the back of the block um, and we had an oil pressure light come on after we pulled off the track which I kind of figured it hopefully was a you know oil pressure sensor because I just had like a rock auto branded one in here it wasn't like an OEM Honda one so uh, what we took care of today was we put a brand new OEM Honda oil pressure sensor in the back of the block also we made a T with some brass fittings and we hooked up a manual uh, a manual oil pressure gauge that we put right uh, behind the steering wheel so we can keep an eye on it and that will be way more accurate also than the factory one but just for that peace of mind I mean on a race car you should definitely have an oil pressure gauge so I'll kind of show you how I did that um, also in the coming days we have uh, some parts coming for our catch can so We'll kind of do that here in the next couple days too. Um, we're going to be deleting the breather box in the back, plugging that massive hole in the block that the breather box goes into, <clears throat> and then we have some really trick parts coming to uh, to hook up the the catch can. So we'll uh, we'll kind of show you what we're doing here, and where I should say what I already did, and uh, I think you guys will like it. So. We hooked up a oil pressure gauge here. Uh, we ran that down, uh, ran it down through here under the dash, uh, and then fed it through a hole that goes through the block, or sorry, hole that goes through the firewall. I'll show you where that comes out. Right there, down in there. And then we made a T fitting. Let's see if I can get in there made a T and the factory oil pressure gauge is on the end and then you can see the hose coming out that is our oil pressure line that goes uh, into that for our manual gauge so pretty snazzy um, one thing I did notice was when I first started it we were at about uh, 90 psi oil pressure and as it's warming up it is going down a little bit so I I am gonna check the specs and make sure that you know, once operational at idle, you know, that it is, you know, right where it needs to be. Um, I'll probably put the specs here uh, on the screen in the video so we know, but I'm gonna basically let this thing idle for a while, let it totally warm up, um, and then I'm gonna take it for a spin, come back, and see where we're at also. So just shut the car off. Um, so it's hovering anywhere between 40 and 60 PSI, just idling. Um, and from what I can tell, that seems pretty normal. Um, Honestly, they said anywhere from like 8 PSI up at idle is fine and normal. So we do have an ACL high performance oil pump on this thing too. So it's kind of hard to get exact data because there really isn't any data out there. I haven't found anybody that had anything. So I was kind of going off of just OEM specs for the stock pump. Um, but yeah, I think what we need to do is we need to go out, get this thing good and hot, beat on it a little bit. Um, it's just so hard to replicate, uh, I mean, it's basically impossible to replicate track scenarios because we're out there for 20 minutes wide open, basically. So, um, 
At the moment, I'm going to say it seems pretty good, um, but I won't know until I go and drive it. Um, I think it did sound like the oil pump valve opens around like 78 PSI or something. I, I don't know if that's true or anything, especially with this ACL pump, but at the moment, it seems fine. So we'll, uh, we'll take it for a spin here. We do have a uh, Honda meetup tonight, and everybody's going to the drive-in movie theater in Wisconsin Dells, so... I don't know if we uh, if we have some good luck here today and everything seems fine. Maybe we'll we'll take the car to the drive-in movie theater, meet up with the other guys. Um, if we do, I'll get some footage of that as well. Um, so I think uh, I'm gonna go eat some breakfast. It is early in the morning yet. Some breakfast and uh, take it for a spin here in a bit and see what we come up with. Alrighty, y'all. So uh, we weren't able to go for a ride earlier, so we're taking the car to the uh, the Honda meetup. So we're gonna meet at the Grateful uh, Truck Shed or Grateful Shed in the Dells. So we'll uh, we'll head out. And hopefully there'll be some people there when we get there. The weather's kind of crummy, drizzly. So rocking the uh, Hoosier Racing slicks in the rain. So we'll give her a go. We're on our way. Uh, yeah, the weather kind of sucks. Check this out. We have no windshield wipers, by the way. Awesome. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we make it there, no issues. Uh, oil pressure looks good also. So we'll uh, check it out when we get there. Probably have to stop and get gas so before we head home. Uh, I should say not gas, E85. But we'll be to the meetup in a few. So guys, we made it. We're at the Grateful Truck Shed. We're hanging out, we're getting some food. Hey guys, so it's been a few days. Um, sorry I didn't get any footage of the little mini car show, but really not hardly hardly anybody showed up because of uh, because of the weather. Um, so yeah, we kind of just hung out, ate some food, and then uh, drove home in the rain with slicks. So yeah, not super exciting. Um, but uh, today uh, we are working back on the car again. Um, I did get some more parts in. I've already started working on it. We did manage to get uh, one awesome thing in today though. We're gonna open that up and see what it is. Part of our catch can kit. Also came with this awesome install socket as well. So open the box and we'll see what that's all about. So this is the level seven quick vent and this is the version, uh, I wanna say 2.2 or 2.1 or something along those lines. I can't remember the exact version of it, but yeah. It's like their latest version that just came out. What this does is it goes where your factory oil cap would be, and then it adds in uh, some AN fittings that you can connect to it um, to vent your valve cover to work kind of like as a, a breather setup. Um, and then you'd run those lines to your catch can. Otherwise, you would have to uh, drill out your valve cover and have uh, AN fittings welded on here. So this basically does that for you. You take your cap off, it threads in, and there's uh, fittings that come out of it, and then you attach your lines to it. So it's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the stuff out of the box here, and I'm gonna assemble it. It comes as a whole kit, a bunch of stuff. Um, and then, uh, so you can guys see what it looks like. So I have this assembled, and you can actually flip so this is a two-piece setup here. There's a seam right there you can see. You can actually flip this either way. So if you want the fittings to come out on the other side, you can. Um, so how I have to do this, because I have aftermarket injectors, injector dynamics style, um, I'm gonna have to put this in here and kind of have it angled a little bit uh, because otherwise the bottom of this will hit on the top of the injectors because um, it's not the factory setup that I have. Um, I will be deleting um, this also because this might actually end up coming in the way as well. So, um, yeah, so that's how that's going to go on there. Um, and then, uh, sorry, this piece here is what threads into your oil cap 
hole and you have to use this special socket to put that in there. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll do that quick so you guys can see how that goes. Um, and then this is your new oil cap. Pretty fancy. So it's a flip socket. Um, being that it's a flip socket, you stick your extension in there. Um, we're actually, I got to flip it the other way. We're using the 34 millimeter side. Um, and then this will basically go in here and it will tighten this nut down and that will in theory pull this down also. Um, this vent hose just barely clears if I wanted to run it, but we're going to be deleting it with the uh, catch can kit. So yeah, here's your two fittings. I'll have to put 90s on it or sorry probably 180s because i'm going to put the catch can in that corner over there kind of by where the aeromotive fuel filter setup is so i ended up getting this uh k motor baffled oil can catch can um i got a dash 10 um an line kit just came with some straight fittings or whatever it was supposed to come with 90s and of course they sent the wrong one so what I ended up doing here so far was I mounted the catch can uh, here on the uh, kind of on the strut tower here. Couldn't end up using the factory, or I shouldn't say factory, the mount that it came with. I couldn't get a good spot to put it on. So I made my own bracket, mounted it there, uh, ran the bottom line so far to our quick vent here, our function seven vent. Um, I am going to have to um, plug this and this also yet, but all I really have to do is make another line and then um, route that again. Uh, if I would have had 90s or like a 180, I would have just 180 would it over to there, but of course they didn't send them and we got a race coming up and yeah, I don't have time to, to wait. So I'll probably just make new lines at some point. I'll probably relocate that when we turbo it anyways. So this will just be temporary. Um, so I just ran them on the back side of the intake manifold and then over to the catch can. So I'll make the other one and, uh, pretty much that'll be a wrap on that part of it. And then we have to do the, um, delete this line here, plug it, remove the PCV valve, which is down in the hole here, and then remove the, the breather box and put that plug in. And then we're going to put one of those dash 10 caps on the plug to plug that you could probably put a y in that run a line off of it and run that to the catch can also but we're just gonna plug it because we don't need it um we're just gonna run these two on top so we'll uh we'll keep rolling So we got both of our lines uh, done. Like I said, I already had one already ran. Um, so just got done making another one. Uh, if you're scared about working with, you know, steel braided line and fittings, don't be. It's super easy. You don't need any special tools. Uh, the only, I would say the hardest part is probably just cutting the line. But if you have a die grinder with a cutoff wheel, that's probably the easiest. You can use a hacksaw. You can use a super sharp knife. Razor blade's kind of a pain in the butt, but... I would say a die grinder is probably the easiest or a hacksaw. Um, but yeah, super simple. Uh, with, uh, a, or with dash 10 fittings, uh, more than likely, depending on the one brand that you get, it's going to be like a one inch wrench is what you need or an adjustable works just fine too. So we'll, uh, we'll get that stuff uh, ran and then I'm going to figure out how I'm going to delete. Uh, I should ha hopefully have some uh, vacuum plugs. I can plug the, the valve cover and the intake pipe because uh, we have to delete that yet too. Okay, all you need is a couple 3 8 vacuum plugs and that will uh, pop right over that. I'll probably throw a zip tie on it. Shouldn't need to, but probably will just in case. And then I'll do the same on the intake pipe there also. Managed to uh, get all the lines ran. Um, got them running over to the catch can. Got uh, 
this blocked off, that blocked off, so we're good there. Um, now all we have to do is uh, jack the car up, get to the back of the block, and install this kit here, and we will be in business. Okay, so we're underneath the car. What we're gonna be deleting is this box right here. So this, this thing here. So all you really need to do, pull this bolt out, a couple uh, lines on the very top of it, um, we'll pull right out like the PCV valve uh, hose, that sort of thing. So I'll undo that bolt and then it'll pull right out of the block and the hole that, uh, that this is going into will be um, plugged up with that kit. So I'll get this off because it's gonna be impossible to film and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. This is the factory breather box. Uh, so you have a line here and then another line going into it there. And then this is where it goes into the block. So we're gonna be plugging this hole with this kit. And this actually wraps around it and then utilizes the factory bolt that would hold this in. Pretty uh, pretty snazzy kit by K Motor. It's relatively inexpensive, like 35 bucks, so not too bad. Um, and then you could either use this to run to the catch can, which we are not going to because where this is positioned, it's so low on the block that you're almost guaranteed to be pushing oil out of it. So we're just going to take a uh, one of those the caps, one of the blue dash 10 caps, and we're gonna just plug that off and not use that at all. And we have to cap the, the lines yet too that went into the top of this. So we'll, we'll do that and uh, I'll show what it looks like on the back of the block. Alrighty, so. The hole we're going to be plugging is this one right here. That's where the, this factory breather went. And then we'll more than likely have to use like this hole here um, for the bracket to, to hold that in. I think this was the stock one that the breather was in originally, but I believe we have to use this one. So we'll get that put in there and I'll show you exactly how it goes. So it's pretty simple. Um, had to use utilize this hole here, got it plugged. Um, yeah, piece of cake, you can see just up there where I put the, um, the vacuum cap on that one. Um, so yeah, that's all plugged. Got that plugged, so we should, uh, should in theory be good to go. Got her fired up. No vacuum leaks. Everything, uh, seems to be pretty good. So, pretty awesome. So I actually took it for a drive um, and I was filling that oil catch can in about 15 minutes, had about half a quart of oil in it. So I actually made a freaking little baffle here that hopefully will help keep oil out of that cap. Um, yeah, so hopefully that'll help. Um, I actually made it out of a painting uh, tray, so yeah, fingers crossed that works. See the baffle down in there, so hopefully that'll keep it from getting uh, up into this piece here. Time will tell, shit will smell. So while we finish up this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to Full Bore Enterprises out of Dodgeville, Wisconsin. Uh, they're probably the Midwest's top machine shop and engine building facility, hands down. They are the best. So if you guys need any machine work, you guys want, whether it's your a Honda, a Chevy, Ford, whatever it is, four-cylinder, eight-cylinder, 16-cylinder, full bore, they can handle it. Also want to give a huge shout out to GMJ Automotive and Adams Friendship, Wisconsin. Um, they are just an awesome automotive shop. If you're uh, in central Wisconsin, you need some, uh, some service work done to your vehicle, hit them up. But I think that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Uh, next weekend, we will be running at Madison International Speedway for round three of the 2020 autocross season. So we will see you guys there. Thank you all and uh, catch you on the next one.